right, James and I are back here at the shop and finally have a new project uh, out, back out of the trailer. So I showed you this on a previous video. This is a mint nice 70 charger. Um, it's had a lot of work done to get it to this point. Um, my buddy Jody over at JW Ride and Custom has done a lot of this. Thankfully, I didn't have to do all of it like I did on Traveler. Um, but even before I got it, the cars had new tail panel, new rear lower valence, new corners, new quarters, new deck filler panel, new trunk floor. And then Jody had to do the uh, passenger or the the back seat floor. This floor, I think, has been replaced. It might be factory. I'm not sure. Roof, I think, is factory. New door shells on both sides. New rockers. Um, did have to have a patch in the frame. He, Jody had to do a couple patches in the firewall. But this thing is sweet. Um, it's got, let me show you the front uh, subframe. So this is an old version of a QA1 tubular subframe. They have a different one now, but this one's got obviously rack and pinion steering. I think it's out of like a Thunderbird and, and these spindles. So I've got adjustable upper control arms to go here. I've got a strut brace to go there. And this over back here is what I just had JW do. So this is a ride tech four link system and a stock eight and three quarter housing. So uh, that's pretty sweet. You can see the shock bolts up there. This is where we're gonna put some shocks and we're about to go to town doing some PR 15 underneath it to protect it real good. And this car in theory is supposed to go on a road trip in a month. I'm not sure about that. I really want to but there's really hardly anything bolted on it at all. So got a lot of work to do. What do you think? Can we make it? There's always the rat shed. There is always the rat shed. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything really cool to take right now. And none of those cars are street legal. That one down there, that's Stonewall. Uh, no engine. So that is probably the coolest street car I own. That's the fastest Grand Marquis in the country that that guy drove on East Coast Shootout and finished second in, thankfully, we won. But uh, it has been right there for a while. I'm just gonna show you this thing real quick, kind of what I'd be up against. As you get closer, you can see the level of mildew is pretty high. You can't even see in it. And this is the scariest part. The back window is down some. So my guess is the smell would leave something to be desired. I can guarantee you if I open the trunk, it's about a foot deep. And uh, yeah, probably gonna skip this as an option. And we're gonna try and get a 70 charger put together in 30 days. So here we go. All right, here we go. About to coat the trunk here. This thing is real nice. It's got just a hair of surface rust right there, but we're gonna cover that up with BR-15. James is uh, servicing the Corvette with the mascots. Here we go. This is actually the first thing I think I've done on this car other than transport it back and forth to JW and uh, yeah, so excited. 30 days. I didn't get too much done. Got some seam sealer. I'll open the A pillar here. I'll get going on the uh, PR15. Got all up in the C post here and here with PR15. You can see some kind of, I spilled a little there. Forgive me. James has been nut and bolting that car and did a bunch of seam sealer along in here and just started along the inside with the POR 15. So got a lot more to do with that, but man, 70 charger ready. All right. A couple days since the last shot here, 
I'm now down to like 28 days. Uh, I'm not much further along with this thing. No way this car is gonna make it on a road trip in 28 days. So I'm pivoting. Uh, I'm gonna keep this, this series going for a build series for this car. Um, and it's gonna be really exciting. And I'm, I'm very committed to the Charger and getting this done as a cannonball project. It's just not gonna be in 30 days. So I'll show you what I am gonna do here probably on the next video, but uh, I'm trying to get ready for Drift University. So here's a shot of how we have to mount tires sometimes. And I'll explain to you kind of why that is too. So there's the starting fluid in the fire. Uh, this Koenig wheel is just a little bit too wide for this tire. So what you have to do, a lot of people try and use fire to uh, to mount tires, but people don't do it the right way, so to speak. So what you want is you want the wheel to be sitting down into the tire and there to be, the tire needs to be touching the lip on the, on the front side. It's okay if it hangs down on the bottom there, but um, it's gotta be sealed on the top. So I'm gonna step away and kind of uh, explain it. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're going to hook it up, your air. You want compressed air flowing when this happens. So you're gonna have the air, you're gonna have the trigger pulled, but before that, you're gonna spread this apart. You're gonna spray your starting fluid down in there and then you're gonna release it. It's gonna create that seal again. Then you're going to light the fire away from the tire. You're going to compress, put air to it. And while you're doing that, the starting fluid's in there. Then you bring the fire over, light it. It's not gonna go immediately because it's not gonna actually get down in that seal. So you're gonna have to actually pop it to let the air and the fire escape down into the wheel and then it's gonna set the bead. But I've kind of got it set on three tires to help the rim drop down in there. So now we're gonna do it.